Um, we got to the place, and there was a line, but the line moved pretty quickly. Got in, like, checked our coach, just like, oh, my God, looking around, this place is just nuts. Um, it was $35 just to get in. Um, yeah, a little pricey, but the atmosphere was just awesome. They had, like, an upstairs area with a bar and stuff and people just hanging out. And the weird thing is that smoking is allowed, like, everywhere. So usually at a bar back home, there's no smoking, but everyone's smoking. So <laughs> next day your jacket smells like smoke, your shirt smells like smoke, your hair and everything. Um, but, uh, and then, uh... And then that, on the bottom, like, you get a free drink. So we walk up to the bar, get our free drink. There's, like, some smeared off, and it just tasted like ginger ale. I was like, this isn't even, this is non-alcoholic. Like, they just give this to the guy, Gene, just make him think that they're drinking. Um, <laughs> so I drank the ginger ale and walked into, uh, walked through this little passageway, and you could just hear the music, and you walk in, and it was this big, huge room, like, really big place. And music was just pounding, lasers shooting all over. It was just crazy club in there, and like the, the everyone was like facing just kind of like a concert up 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 at the uh, stage, and there were a couple DJs, Japanese DJs, up on the stage, and uh, so we, I just kind of pushed everyone through, and we just started dancing and just having a great time. You could see the DJ doing the actual things and hearing what it was doing, and they had the whole like you always see on TV and in movies, the green laser that like shoots over everyone's head and you can like stick your hand up through it yeah they had that like shooting right over us so we hung out there for a little bit and then went back drank a little bit socialized went upstairs um um we drank sake we didn't know what to order on the menu so just got straight sake um just a cup with sake and a clear sake um it wasn't bad though sake goes on really easy um so that, and then, uh, then we went back into the club, and by this time it was, like, really packed, like, I don't know what time it was, maybe 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. or something, I'm not sure, um, so I started getting a little crazy, I talked to a whole bunch of Japanese people, like, I just, I don't even know how it would start, like, they'd start dancing with me or something, and, like, they'd see that I could speak Japanese, so immediately they'd be interested and be asking about me and stuff, and, Talked to a whole bunch of different people. Um, my buddy Greg, he he like wants to uh, meet Japanese girls, so I was introducing him to Japanese girls, um, but he he can't speak any Japanese, like zero, zero. Like he knows please and thank you. Um, so like I'm just doing like all the talking between him and the girl or whatever, and he met one girl, but she was kind of being weird about stuff, and I talked to a whole bunch of guys. Like I was just like, uh, you know, connecting arms or whatever and dancing with guys and girls. It was just, it was just a ball. It was so much fun. <laughs> and the, the music was awesome. Like it just, club music just blew me away. Um, it was just so good. Like, yeah, I don't know what good club music is, but that was, it was so good. Um, just dance forever. And then, uh, I introduced Greg to another girl, but um, see, most girls can speak some English, so I figure, you know, I can introduce them and, you know, Greg can talk his English and <laughs> have somehow understand each other. Um, but she couldn't speak e any English at all, so she was, and she was pretty cute, so, like, I, I, I just pretty much, like, talked to her for him, and, uh, and then, don't tell anyone, but, uh, then we went, we went to leave, and uh, everyone went to go get the coats. I was like, yeah, could you grab my coat? And I walked over and uh, I went up to her and I just started talking to her like, yeah, sorry, that's my, my guy, Gene friend that can't speak any Japanese. Um, but he got your number and I'll, I'll give you a call and I'll, I'll be talking to you, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh yeah, you could, you could teach me English too. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, Greg wants me to call her for him and I don't know, I just... It's kind of hopeless because there's just no way they'll ever be able to communicate anytime soon. So I told Greg, like, yeah, she's really cute. He's like, I need her. It was like, nah, it's it's funny, but um, yeah. After and that by that time it was like probably like four a.m. or something, and we left and found uh, oh, what was that burger joint called? Freshness Burger. 
Um, just like a random restaurant. Freshness Burger was just tripping all over. I got grease on my jeans. Um, did that. And then, uh, and we split up with them. And Becky and I came back to Shibuya. And it was like 4.45. And we sat there for like 20 minutes and waited for the first train to start up and got on the first train and came back here and went to sleep at like, I don't know, 5.30 a.m. or whatever. So it was... Sounds like a long night, but really it just went by so fast. I just, it was just, I was just having so much fun the whole time. I was just in that club dance and I was just giggling like a little schoolgirl. It was just so, so much fun. Um, and the people are so cool. It's really cool being able to speak Japanese. Like, I can actually, because we have no idea where we're going, so I'm constantly asking for directions. And so we're constantly getting directions to go places and and the people I talked to are just really interesting. Um, and they're all just really nice. Um, I figure I'll actually be able to like make some Japanese friends if I... I definitely want to go back to that Club Asia because I got two drink tickets. Like, I bought two drinks and then she handed me like a slip and I just put it in my pocket, didn't pay attention, but it's a drink ticket. So I figure I got two free drinks waiting for me at Club Asia. Um, yeah, Club Asia. And by the way, we were the only white people there. <laughs> the only um and uh and then today i just didn't do anything mike and i went shopping got food at the grocery store like it's cool going to a japanese grocery store it's a lot different there's just full of raw, tons of different raw fish like oh my god people eat that really and everything's in japanese too so like trying to find salt and pepper was like oh uh, the the i don't know so did that and uh Tomorrow morning, gonna get my alien registration, and be pretty much like set up to just kind of start kicking it, just start kicking it. Um, that's uh, oh yeah, uh, um, no, that's that's not interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Hope you guys enjoyed the quick little story. I w I wish I could just you know have a video camera with me at all times, but I don't want to bring it out drinking and, you know, busting out a video camera in the club probably looks bad and I don't want to get kicked out and I don't want my video camera taken away, but, uh, maybe one of these times I'll sneak a video camera in there and, uh, take a video for you because you just have no idea. It's just, it's like what, what you see on TV, like, oh, Vegas, like, oh my God, those clubs look so sweet. Like, yeah, it wasn't quite as big as a lot of those clubs in Vegas, but, the atmosphere and everything was a lot the same. And I completely surprised myself by the amount of Japanese people I've, I've been talking to. And it's speaking Japanese just is pretty easy now. Like, I, I really don't have to think about it unless I just all of a sudden just can't remember a word. Then I have to actually start thinking and then I can never remember it. But I can still get the point across. Hands. Just use a lot of hands and pointing and stuff. Um, yeah. Hope you're enjoying yourself wherever you are.